Someone on my YouTube channel actually suggested putting together a video talking about why some people will put down American shoes as being chunky um, and European shoes as not being chunky. So what I did today was I pulled together a number of European shoes and American shoes that are both what I would consider chunky so that we can take a look at what makes them different and why some people would choose one over the other. Uh, so we're actually gonna look at 10 different shoes today. Uh, so there's uh, quite a bit to talk about and uh, here we go. Hey, before we get started, I just wanted to point out that I've organized all my videos into playlists on my channel. So if you're looking for more videos around a specific topic, uh, especially topics like this with general shoe knowledge, you can find all of the videos in one place uh, so that you're able to easily access everything that's out there. Thanks much. So let's talk about chunky. What is a chunky shoe really made of? Um, you know, there's a couple things that I think that uh, are pretty indicative, okay? So let's take a look at this. This is an Alden 979. Um, and this has a double sole. It has a 360 degree welt. So the heel is visibly larger than, than the shoe, right? Um, and it, uh, the design, I mean, this is a, a, a long wing blucher. The design is just kind of big. It's not like an Oxford. And there are a lot of American shoes that have this reputation. This is on the Barry last. And as, as a whole, this last is very round um, and, and very big. And this style is what I will call prototypical American. So, uh, but America is not the only country that puts out shoes in this style. Um, I have this style from another maker here, which is Carmina. Uh, this also has a double sole and has a commando sole underneath it. So it's really thick sole. Um, and uh, you can see this is a long wing blucher, also with a 360 degree welt. Uh, now the design of this shoe, okay, we talk about the Barry last, this is on the Oscar last, is quite a bit slicker. It has a little bit more rounded edges, a little bit more forming to the foot, okay? A little narrower heel. And that I think is part of what people are looking at. But I do think it's important that as you look at American shoes and, and American shoe style, that you not think of it as just being chunky. Uh, when you get into an Oxford, an Oxford can look quite nice uh, in an American shoe and um, have a very, very different profile. However, when you make choices to make that Oxford chunky, like I did here by putting a big double sole on it, uh, contrast stitching, uh, big 360 degree welt, huge heel, um, it still comes across as being a chunkier shoe. Now, uh, in, in my mind, sometimes chunky is good, sometimes chunky is not. So I've made comments on my YouTube channel when I was looking at a pair of Palo Scafora split toe shoes that these were beautifully chunky, okay? And somebody got kind of uh, a little aggravated with me because uh, they thought that I was saying that Italian shoes are better than American shoes. And I, don't, I certainly don't think so. But today what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at five shoes from America and five shoes from different countries. Um, actually, I have Spain, Italy, the UK, France, and Hungary. Um, and, and we'll look at how the styles are all considered chunky. And then what are some of the things that might be classically American? And what are some of the things that would be classically European? So here we go. So as we look at the American shoes, we have a Allen Edmonds Walton. Uh, this is a split toe uh, blucher with a Algonquin toe. So it's got the long toe and it has the French apron style. Um, it has, uh, this is on, um, I don't remember what last it is. I'll, I'll write it in there. I think it's like the 98 last or something like that. But uh, this has a, um, a very, very big round toe, okay? So if you look at it this way, 
Um, that's, that's more than an almond shape. That's more of a round shape. Um, and, and it also has a very big heel. Okay? Um, so as, and this is a factory second, you can see from the, the thing there. But um, uh, if you look on the bottom side, right, this is a very, very wide shoe. You know, one of the things that I'll talk about on, on a number of my videos is how I like the really, really narrow waist. The narrow waist is not appropriate when you're looking for chunky shoes. So all of the shoes that I have today don't have that narrow waist. And I think that as you're dressing in a casual way, or you're trying to dress down formal attire, like, you know, when you wear a suit, but you're wearing a polo shirt under it, you're, um, you know, wearing a, a, a dress shirt with no tie, or you're wearing a very patterned shirt, um, you don't necessarily want to wear, you know, a really slick Oxford underneath it or a whole cut. You want to wear something that's a little bit more casual. And, and, and I like these chunkier shoes because they give you the ability to really dress it down just a tad. And realistically, this is the kind of difference that I noticed for myself. I don't think anybody else notices, uh, but maybe they do. So, so that's, uh, so that's an example of, of one shoe, right? So again, this is an Allen Edmonds, a Walton. Uh, this is a design that I've owned in my collection off and on since 1997. Um, and uh, just a, a really, really very uh, classic shoe, very well-made shoe also. Um, not necessarily what I would call high-end, uh, but it, uh, it is very, very well-constructed uh, using very good material and uh, just a, a, a really fun shoe to wear. Now, uh, the next shoe that I have um, is a, um, this is an Alden 962. Uh, this has a, a pie crust apron and toe. Uh, it has um, a, um, a 270 degree weld, which means that it has a little bit less uh, chunk around the heel. But as you look at the front of it, it has significant chunk on the sides and this very, very substantial double sole. Okay? So uh, this is also what I would consider prototypical American. This is on the Aberdeen last, which is actually one of Alden's narrowest lasts, uh, but it's still, it's just a big shoe. And if you compare it to uh, like a Gaziano and Girling Oxford, uh, it looks really, really big and chunky. Uh, so really, really good for casual wear. Uh, definitely something to, uh, to look for if you're trying to dress down an outfit. So. Uh, now, next American shoe, this is an Allen Edmonds uh, Cornwallis. Now, this is a special makeup. Normally, the Cornwallis does not have a storm welt on it, uh, does not have a contrast sole, and does not have a double sole. Uh, this was something that was through a, uh, a special event that they did called a um, trunk sale, um, where you were able to actually customize what you wanted on the shoe. And this was a Shell Cordovan uh, trunk sale, which they actually have uh, being repeated here uh, during September. Uh, where you can actually make choices on how you want the shoe. Uh, it's not on sale, but it is a, uh, a great opportunity for you to really design something for you uh, the way you like it. Now, um, the Storm Welt, as they have here, and, and be careful with Storm Welt. Storm Welt is a split reverse welt where it has this little edge that comes up along the side. Um, in Allen Edmonds vernacular, storm welt means something totally different. They actually have a plastic layer around the bottom of the shoe to make it waterproof. So uh, just be aware that uh, different shoe companies will use different terminology for that. But um, this uh, storm welt also adds to a casualness on the shoe um, and, and is something that I like. I like the storm welt look. Uh, there are some brands like Grenson that have this huge, or what they call a triple welt, okay? Uh, but uh, it, and it all depends on how you, how you like it. And, and I have one shoe here from Hungary that has a very, very big welt, uh, which, is, which is also something that adds to the casualness and is a really big visual piece of the shoe. Uh, again, very chunky because it's double sole, because it's 360 welt. The shoe itself is a little bit slicker, but still this design, and this is the uh, 1973 last from Allen Edmonds, is not a slick last, right? It's not a pointy toe. Uh, it's not a, uh, there isn't that big rise on the toe. Uh, that slick design that you commonly see on European Oxfords it is not here, but it's a very, very good looking shoe and, and a very formal shoe that I've dressed down based on the design elements that I added. Now, uh, the next one from Allen Edmonds that we have is the Norwich. Now this is a monk strap, but this is a single monk, which 
makes it a little bit chunkier than, you know, double monks can be really, really slick. Uh, sometimes they have cap toes, but single monks without an apron are usually a little bit on the thicker side. Now this one has this gorgeous double sole, which uh, really adds to it. And you can see uh, it's very wide and um, has the split in the back. Just a very big, chunky shoe. Even the buckle on this is just big and, and sticks out quite a bit here. Really like the way that this looks. It's a great look and a casual shoe. Also in Shell Cordovan, which is also less formal um, because it's not something that most of us bring to a high shine. You can, uh, but it's, uh, it's not something that most of us do. Now, and then last, this is the Alden 979. Um, as I talked before, the prototypical long wing blucher. This is, in my opinion, what was the original gunboat, as people talk about gunboats as, as long wing bluchers, and uh, a very, very good, very chunky shoe, uh, but um, really designed to be waterproof, has this big, huge storm welt on it. And you can see, um, you know, just a very, very solid uh, piece of footwear here. Uh, again, uh, it's big, it's chunky, and I like that. And, and this, this is what's prototypical American. So now let's take a look at the Hungarian, uh, the Hungarian shoe because I wanna make sure that we talk about big and chunky Hungarian brands. And the brand that comes to mind when I think of uh, a European chunky shoe is Heinrich Dinkelacker. Now this is a short wing uh, derby. Okay? And this is a three eyelet derby. So it has a, a bigger vamp visible here. Uh, but it has this huge uh, Norwegian welt. Now this actually has four lines of stitches uh, and a goiser welt, which is very, um, very unique. It's not something that you see a lot. And it also has a storm welt underneath it, which is also not common. Normally when they do a goiser welt, it's just attached directly into the shoe. So it has a slicker appearance. This one, because it has four rows instead of two, and because it has the storm welt there, it kind of angles out and looks like a braid. Now here, it's difficult to see the four rows, and I'll include some pictures, but the reason that it, it's hard to tell is because they actually made two different colors. So they have one row that is a light brown or almost white, off-white, and then they have one that's black. So it's a, a, it's a really, really chunky methodology for doing a shoe. Now this shoe is in carbon color, which is kind of like a gray, kind of looks black in the, in the shade and looks uh, kind of gray, a little light brown in the light. Uh, very, very different color. I, I like it a lot because it has a lot of uh, tonal variation. And that's something that I like in my shoes. And I'm not a fan of black. So this gives me the ability to have a formal color without necessarily, um, you know, being quite as formal. Uh, also really, really big, chunky sole. Uh, thick sole, double sole, okay? Uh, this is also a JR sole, as, as many of the others were that you saw. Um, and look at the size of this waist. This is a giant waist. Now, this is a European shoe. It has a, a shank in it, and it has a, um, a slight bevel to it. Uh, Heinrich Dinklocker is known for doing these rows of nails, these little triangles of nails uh, on the sole uh, to protect the, uh, the sole. Actually, I, I got into a long discussion with a salesperson at the uh, Heinrich Dinklocker headquarters um, that, um, about whether or not it was better to have the Triumph tip or whether or not it was better to have the nails. And she was convinced that the nails are better, even though they have an entire line of shoes that uses the, uh, the Triumph tip. But uh, it's, a, it's a very, very cool shoe. Now, one of the things that I think is really cool is that when, when you look at American shoes, brogues versus, um, uh, uh, so here, let's take a look at the Alden shoe and you look at it compared to this, you'll notice here there's a big difference in some of the, the European brands versus the American brands, and that some of the European brands do really large brogue holes. I mean, these are really large, not, uh, not, not slightly different. So you ought, I mean, even with the quality of this camera, which is not that great, you can see the difference very, very clearly. Now, what's interesting is if you look at the American shoe versus the Spanish shoe that I showed before, the Spanish shoe actually has smaller brogue holes. So this is not consistent, and it's not much smaller. So, but it, it's not, not a consistent thing. But if you look at Trickers, uh, if you look at Grenson, as a lot of the different UK brands, Heinrich Dinklocker does this quite a bit as well. Um, they have large brogue holes. 
And, and, and that is something that I think is part of the European ethos in Brogues and, and, and something that is a, a really cool uh, differentiator. Now, um, uh, the last on this, uh, obviously the waste is pretty big, but if you look at the profile this way, it's not as chunky as this, right? This has a higher toe, has a little bit um, higher uh, top line, uh, not much, uh, but like here, if you look at the top line on the heel, keeping in mind that these are the same, you can see that underneath the ankle, the Heinrich Dinkelacher is a lot lower on your foot. Okay, again, a little bit of a slicker appearance, but still a very, very chunky shoe. So a, li a little bit of a difference there. So let's go from uh, Hungary to France. And here we have the Paraboot Avignon. Okay? And this is a uh, Algonquin toe split toe, also with the uh, French top. And um, this is in suede, which makes it a little bit harder to see. Uh, but you know, you can look at this sole. Now, uh, Paraboot is very, very well known for their rubber soles. And as you look at the sole, it is quite thick. If you compare this double sole to the double sole on an Alden, um, it is pretty darn close. If you look at this as the double sole with the rubber on the Carmina, it is also about the same as the bottom of the Carmina, um, you know, where you actually have the commando coming out. Okay, so um, so again, it, it's a it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting design, very chunky. This has a Norwegian welt to it, but this has a different kind of Norwegian welt. This has the storm welt on it, and it has only a single goister line instead of the traditional double. And uh, Paraboot is one of the few companies that, that does it this way. Um, many people think that this is a Goodyear welted shoe that has a fake stitch line, um, very similar to, um, uh, the, I have a pair of Cobbler Union that is pre-stitched um, uh, on, the, on the Norwegian side, but uh, is a regular Goodyear welted shoe. Uh, but um, I've done extensive research on this and Paraboot is an actual Norwegian welt. It's just a different welt type, okay? So, um, but again, chunky, this is a wide shoe. Now, if you look at the overall design this way and you compare it to the Allen Edmonds on the same, uh, same design, the Allen Edmonds here is actually a little bit slicker, okay? A little bit lower on the toe and lower on the top line, okay? So this is chunkier and um, again, uh, this is, if, you go, if you're a fan on Instagram, uh, uh, take a look and just do a search for Paraboot uh, and you'll see about a third of all Paraboot posts on Instagram are the Avignon. They make this in Shell Cordovan, they make it in Calf, uh, and they do this in Suede. It is a, a very popular shoe internationally, uh, although I had never seen it in the US, I actually saw it first on Instagram, and uh, really um, uh, quite popular and always um, super, super chunky. You can see a lot of different ways that folks wear it. Now, um, I actually don't have any American uh, plain toe bluchers or PTBs anymore, but I wanted to point this pair out because this is a good example of a UK brand that takes a prototypical American design, okay? So if you think of PTBs, um, not a lot of European brands make a PTB. This is a plain toe blucher and it's a whole cut blucher. Um, so, you know, one piece of leather, it has a patch on the back, and then they um, sew on the uh, eyelets for the derby piece there. And um, this is uh, made by Crockett and Jones. This is a Lenark three. Now um, this has a day night sole, but also quite chunky, big double sole, uh, 360 degree welt, storm welt, okay, all the way around and um, has a really, really good big shape to the sole. This last is chunky. And, um, you know, something to keep in mind, right? Everybody thinks of Crockett and Jones as these really slick whole cuts, really slick, um, you know, Adelaide's, uh, but it's not only that, right? You can get all types of designs at Crockett and Jones, including this one, uh, which is one of my favorites. Um, and uh, by the way, um, Crockett and Jones, some of the nicest leather I've ever felt on a pair of shoes. So, and then, um, uh, 
Last, we're going to talk about this one again. This is the um, uh, Palo Scafora 5A3. Uh, this has the Goiser welt at uh, 270 degree um, here. So you can see it's got the two lines, as I talked about before. There's no storm, OK? Uh, a very, very narrow heel. So you can see the heel is narrower than the shoe. Um, big waist, beveled waist, though. This has a, this has a fiddle back on it. Uh, but when you look at the shoe, this is still quite chunky. So if I compare this, we'll start here. You know, the shape is uh, actually has a little bit more form to it than the Norwich, but um, is not smaller. Okay, you look at it this way. Um, this is probably a little chunkier. The high line on it is, or the top line on it is also higher. Uh, then we look at it compared to the Walton, which is the also a split toe although very, very different shoe. And the Walton's uh, lines are more rounded. Uh, this has more of a form to it. And when I talk about form, what do I mean? Okay. Let's look at this from this angle. This line here, where it comes in, where it forms to your foot, is more substantial than it is on, on, on the American shoes. Uh, this one, um, as we look here, okay. Um, they both have a line, but this line just comes in a little bit more dramatically. It's not terrible. It's, it's just a little different. And um, then when you look here, uh, this is not as rounded. This has a little bit more of an almond shape to it. Not a point, because it's kind of like the back of the almond instead of the front of the almond. So something to keep in mind there, right? So anyway, so um, different uh, chunky styles. Uh, from different uh, countries. And then, of course, we talked about Spain before with the uh, Carmina. This is a uh, 532 and uh, a very solid design, uh, traditional American design of a shoe along with the blucher uh, with that Oscar last, which is just a little bit different than the American lasts. And of course, if I compared this to an Allen Edmonds uh, long wing bleacher versus the uh, versus the Alden long wing bleacher, uh, it would look more similar still. So anyway, this is uh, Wisconsin Shoe Guy. I hope you found that beneficial and you found it interesting. I'm anxious to hear your comments, uh, so please let me know what you think. Thank you so much. Bye.